Bienvenue. My name is Charles Blanchin Zakimana, Communications Director at Pelicoptex. Welcome to our Neurotechnology Student Society. Polycoptex was founded two years ago and now brings together over 30 neurotechnology enthusiasts studying engineering at Polytechnic Montréal. We combine our knowledge and creativity and pursue activities that involve the acquisition, the processing, and analysis of signals from the brain to develop tangible and practical applications. Our interdisciplinary teams are organized with three areas of expertise and include design, computer, and electronics engineering. Our submission to the Neurotech X 2008 Fixed Challenge aimed at meeting all competition requirements and exceeding expectations wherever opportunity arose. Inspired by available open source projects and leveraging software provided by our sponsors, we designed a printed circuit board featuring surface mount technology and four channels for biosignal inputs. Our circuit is optimized to gather EEG signals using electrodes and it provides analog filtering and amplification. Connection of the circuit to a Raspberry Pi computer allows wireless communication with other devices and also to our Python written application. Through the application, real-time data can be visualized. Let's have a look at our project uh, with a live demonstration, a complete explanation of our acquisition pipeline, and a presentation of our system's main features. Here to give you a presentation now of our circuit and also our processing software, I'm joined by our technical team. EEG signals are captured on the scalp and are typically very small in peak-to-peak -peak amplitudes, ranging from as little as 5 to 300 microvolts. As a result of, this, of the signal's small intensity, which originates from the activity of neurons, our acquisition PCB is multi-leveled and designed to amplify its input with, a, with an approximate gain of around 18,000. In addition for the need, to the need for increasing the strength of the signal, the EEG recorded activity of neurons is rhythmic and our PCB is selective to a range of frequencies typically associated with mental activity, which is around 0.5 to 35 Hz. Additionally, we have not yet built a program uh, that notifies us whenever alpha waves are present. However, it is possible to see slight changes in the frequency domain signals whenever the subject opens or closes its eyes. The circuit contains five electrodes, so four signals uh, can be generated. Every uh, channel is compared to a reference electrode. Uh, notice that in our present circuit, we uh, the bias electrode and the reference electrode are connected. Uh, in further work, we would like to separate those uh, in order to increase the flexibility of our PCB. So uh, every signal uh, passes through an instrumentation op-amp, then uh, it passes through a high and a low pass filter uh, in order to keep only the frequency of interest, which is uh, from 0.5 to 35 Hz. A notch analog filter then removes the 60 Hz power line frequency interference. The signal is further amplified before it is directed to an analog to digital converter, which is an ADC, that connect that is connected to our Raspberry Pi computer over an I2C protocol. The Raspberry Pi runs our data uh, processing through a program, which provides real-time signal in time and frequency domain. So as we can see here, the signals obtained reflect very well the frequency domain range, as we can see over here. We've got the time, time graphs and the frequency graphs. We've got four channels for each of the electrodes that are connected to the subject's brain. Because we care for our members' safety, our PCB contains a security circuit that prevents highly keen current from going from this board to the user and conversely from the user to the circuit's components. Okay, so to give an overview uh, of our circuit, each channel first proceeds through the instrumentation amplifier stage, which provides differential amplification between our reference electrode and another electrode. Here the gain is 885, it's set by a reference of 56 ohms. Then the signal goes into our active analog filters, then a high pass filter at unity gain and cutoff frequency of 0.3 Hz allows the removal of very low frequencies. Then our low pass filter, also at unity gain, has a cutoff of 35 Hz. This stage reduces 60 Hz interference and maintains our signals of interest. Our twin notch filter is set at 60 Hz and offers a reduction in gain of 0.74. Then the signal goes to our final non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 28 and for a total gain of 18,139. 18, the analog to digital converter is powered by the Raspberry Pi and offers a precision of 16 bits. The signals are actually centered at 2.5 volts because the differential powering of the op-amps, which explains uh, the total gain of the circuit being limited to 18,000. 
finally the I2C port of the Raspberry Pi ensures communication with our circuit board. We connect the subject to the oscilloscope through our circuit and we are doing the acquisition of the EEG signal in yellow and we are also plotting is FFT in red. It's possible to save all this data in CSV format right here and we can use this data later on. So here is the interface running through our Raspberry Pi. Uh, the ADC sends the digital data uh, through our Raspberry Pi, which is processed, and we can see a time domain and a frequency domain. Right now, I have a 2 hertz signal. So as we can see uh, on the screen, we have two cycles during one second, and we have a, do a dominant frequency at 2 hertz. If I change the frequency on my waveform ge generator at 10 hertz, we can see that we have about 10 cycles during one second and that the dominant frequency moved at 10 hertz. As we can see, the system we built is working quite well. We were able to capture the EEG signals from the scalp, amplify and filter them, and then transfer them to the Raspberry Pi for future processing. We believe that filtering the signals in the analog domain is advantageous for future precision work and concrete application. Indeed, the digital filters we added in our program are there to complete and ensure an almost perfect filtering. Also, we designed our PCB using surface-mounted technology to, to optimize the size of the card and to improve the signal-to-noise ratio. The data processing code succeeds in reading simultaneously the four channels and then permits the real-time data visualization and processing. The total cost of our homemade acquisition board with all of its components is $0.76.10, and 10 cents, uh, which is far below our project's $1,000 limit. By far the highest cost is the in instrumentation amplifier, which takes up more than two-thirds of our total costs. While other integrated circuits contributed to our spending, they were not nearly as expensive. From a financial feasibility perspective, the construction of our BCB is quite accessible. Also, our circuit is small. Uh, it's 9.8 to uh, by 5.5 centimeters and can eventually easily fit on a headset. The size could also be improved in future work. The design we made was initially for convenient testing. At this time, using our acquisition card and our processing code, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, one can simply co connect the electrodes on the subject, connect any computer by VNC to the Raspberry Pi after installation of the pipeline code, and then visualize the signals on the interface. Another advantage of our PCB is its flexibility. So by changing the values of certain components of the PCB, such as capacitors or the resistors, we are able to create an acquisition card for any other physiological signal, such as an electrocardiogram, also known as ECG. Therefore, the realization of this project was very good to understand and experiment the better way to detect EEG signals. Even though an analog 60 Hz notch is implemented on the board, after the final amplification, the signal is affected by the 60 Hz interference on small signals like EEG. A second set of analog filters should be added after the final amplification. Another possibility would be to add digital filters on the Raspberry Pi to avoid the 60 Hz interference. In our current board, the bias and the reference electrodes are connected. To have more flexibility, the two electrodes should be independent because they have two different roles. This way, they can be put at different places on the head to be more efficient. The EEG is the result of the difference between a given electrode and the reference, whereas the bias electrode is used to remove noise. Another possible improvement would be to design a headset to easily place the electrodes. In future work, we would also integrate more options in our pipeline code, like digital filters, the alpha mode, and data recording. In this project, we achieved the conception of a complete EEG acquisition pipeline from electrodes to real-time da data visualization. Our acquisition board allows four signals to be read simultaneously, and our pipeline program permits parameters of interest extraction. As a student group, we strongly value the opportunity to draw from classroom and many other experiences and to gain a true appreciation of the fundamental knowledge behind EEG applications. Our members face some important challenges and learn lots throughout our project. Surprisingly, one of the tallest hurdles to our design was establishing proper powering of all of our PCB components using only a 5 volt source. In this regard, we developed a precise virtual ground to help us in achieving our goal. 
Other difficulties we encountered included determining the, imp the implications of our electrode, which was a reference electrode, versus a bias electrode. And through a lot of reading, we produced a system that each of our members understands quite well. Lastly, another obstacle was the efficient analog removal of 60 Hz interference, which will benefit for future improvements to our design. The realization of our project, which at first glance may seem relatively simple, does require a complete understanding of the EG acquisition theory and the application of concrete electronics and computer science skills. In line with other open source initiatives, which foster a thriving neural technology community, we're excited to make available on our GitHub repository all re references and resources which would allow anyone else to recreate our project. The advancement of science is a great privilege to any engineer. At Polycortex, we show you that there is more than one way of using your brain to do so. Thank you, and stay tuned for improvements to our project and other endeavors in the near future.